Three, two, one. This is Chargers Unleashed Podcast. Here are your hosts, Dan Wolfenstein and Jake Hefner. Welcome to Chargers Unleashed. Thank you so much for joining us. Dan Wolkenstein here from the LA Football Network. Along with podcasts everywhere, you can also find us on YouTube and Patreon and all major social media platforms, including Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at LAC underscore Unleashed. Oh my goodness, if this is your first time tuning in, welcome to Chargers Unleashed. Happy Friday, super fun show lined up for you today as we have a VIP in the house. Chargers fans, you've been clamoring for this one since the day he was drafted. Chargers fourth round draft pick Isaiah Spiller coming up next on Chargers Unleashed. Chargers fourth round draft pick in the 2022 NFL Draft rocking the 2-8 in the backfield from Texas A&M. Mr. Isaiah Spiller joins us on Chargers Unleashed. Isaiah, welcome to Chargers Unleashed. Welcome to the Bolt fam. How are you? How's LA treating you so far? It's going pretty good, man. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be a Charger. Um, just getting acclimated with the team, so it's been going pretty good. What's the vibe like in L.A. versus College Station? Um, the weather's better, uh, so <laughs> <laughs> it's going pretty good, though. I mean, um, I'm starting to talk to the coaches, Coach Foster, Coach Staley, so just being a sponge every day and learning, so that's what I'm doing right now. Love it. Love it. We're going to hopefully be a sponge for you today and kind of learn a little bit about you. We're going to obviously talk about your time at College Station with AM, this Chargers team, your role alongside Austin Eckler uh, and OTAs, maybe some team expectations, but it's also just kind of get to know you a little bit. Um, but let's start with draft weekend. You know, I'm dying to know. We always love to kind of talk to, to players about what their draft weekend was like. Take us into like the spiller festivities. Like, how was that draft weekend for you? Like, how did you and the family celebrate? Like, what was the food spread like? What was the vibe? Yeah. Like, take us into your day. Um, well, I was in Gulf Shores, Alabama. So I was on the beach um, enjoying my time um, all for those couple of days. Um, I'll say it was very stressful because you didn't know what was going to happen. Um, I'm very grateful that the Chargers picked me. Um, so it was very stressful. Uh, I was blessed to be in that position. Um I'm just grateful that I got drafted. Didn't know what the situation was going to look like for me. So um, I think it worked out well for me. And uh, uh, it was grateful. Great situation, too. Um, my mom, she had, um, she had, I think we had, like, catered some seafood. Um, then the other night, we had catered, like, Outback. So we ate pretty good. So I couldn't complain. I was, I was going to say, so in terms of, like, stress eating, I know if it was me, I'd be eating for, like, three pounds. Yeah. <laughs> Did you were you stress eating? Like, what was your snack candy? What uh, was it? <laughs> when I'm stressed out, I don't eat. Like, I can't eat. Like, <laughs> eating makes me like and gives me like an anxiety. I don't know why. So I just don't eat when I'm stressed. So noted, noted. Yeah. Okay, okay. And then um, I guess you know you mentioned you're grateful for the for the charges call. I mean, what was that call like when you got it from Tom Telesco? Like, did you know like that was the charges immediately? Had you talked to them before? Like. Um, I had talked. I had talked to the Chargers at the combine, but I hadn't talked to them after that at all. So it was a very big surprise. Um, it was a shock to me. Um, but when I figured I was going to LA and you know got on the call, it was just it was like a sigh of relief to just to know that you know you're going somewhere and uh, you got somewhere to be. So. You made it. Yeah, that's kind of like that one weight lifted off your shoulders. Um, hey. Countless hours are spent on and off the field as a professional football player, whether it's in college or the NFL. Now you're in the NFL. I'm yeah. sure there have been some of those like dog days, like those tough days, setbacks, if you will, throughout your football life. Yeah. But but like motivation is a hell of a thing, right? Like, what is it that keeps you motivated? Like, what is it other than like the pure love for the game, obviously? Like, what's your why when you strap on the pads? Um, just the support of my family. Uh, you know, they always really been there for me. Um, you know, just helping them out, seeing what my parents done went through the past couple of years. So, uh, just having them in the back of my mind, knowing that they depending on me every time I step on the field and just knowing I'm repping the name on my back, um, every time I step on the field. So it just gave me a sigh of, uh, just want to go out there and compete and give it my all every, every time I strap it up. So. Now, I did, I did hear a story, um, I read an article about you and your father, where, like, he, he kind of almost lives vicariously through you a bit, 
uh, your time here at the NFL. I know he had an injury when he was in college, was able to kind of do the things that you're doing now. Uh, it got to be fun, right? Now that you're in the NFL, like you're kind of so close to your dad, like having him kind of as that motivating factor as well, getting him to kind of, you know, enjoy the time that you are having now. Yeah, for sure. I, it really is. Um, he wears my jersey a lot. Uh, you know, he just got it in. So um, it's an exciting situation for him. He's done a lot for me. In my The way I run, uh, he's taught me how to take a handoff, how to read blocks, how to catch the ball. So um, he's invested a lot in me, and um, I'm just grateful to be in this position and uh, do that for him. So We're looking forward to seeing him, meeting him at SoFi. Um, sure. I got to admit, there, there is a soft spot in my heart for a &M. I have a ton of family who graduated from there, whether it's the culture, you know, the stadium, when it sways, all the yells, you got Northgate, you got Dixie Chicken, Fuego, the whole nine. <laughs> Either on or off the field, like, what were some of your highlights from your time in College Station? Um, probably definitely Fuegos, um, especially, like, late nights. Fuegos used to be the spot for me. Um, just really going out with the guys after games, that would be an uh, experience, so... College Station was definitely an experience for me. Um, definitely grown as a person there and as a player. So uh, just it really is a great experience, and uh, I wouldn't take anything from it. So, was, was there a play or a time as a player on the field that you remember or that stands out to you as, like, your favorite memory? Yeah. Um, Probably the first time after we had beat Florida, that was like the first time we had beat like a top five team in like a minute, like 10 years, I think, 10 or eight years. <laughs> so that was a moment for us um, just to get over that hump. Um, you know, it was because uh, we were always almost there beating those top teams. And um, for us to do that, it was a great moment and uh, something I'll never forget. And um, I think it really helped change the organization of A&M and the program as a whole. So uh, that was probably a moment I'll never forget. And the Alabama win, too, as well. So I was, was going to say, like, it has to be there. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. Too. All those games are really crazy. So, I mean, it was really just fun playing in those games, competing with the best talent. Um, so it was, it was an experience for real. I love it. All right, so let's transition to the Chargers now. Uh, you're coming into an offense with playmakers all over the field, literally. you got Mike, Keenan, Gerald, Justin, and then obviously you have Austin Eckler in the backfield. You know, Austin's expressed on numerous occasions these past few years he'd like someone to kind of you know step up and earn that second RB position. What are maybe some of your personal goals this year in this offense? Like, How do you see your skill set impacting the team? Um, I feel like my skill set can impact the team a lot. Um, just me catching the ball at the backfield, um, me running in between the tackles. Um, so I feel like whatever the offense asks me to do, I'm going to go out and give them all. So um, any opportunity I get, I'm going to take full advantage of it um, and just be ready when my numbers call. So that's what I'm really focused on right now and just learning the plays, trying to get the offense down, uh, you know. So it's different from getting signals on the side and then staying in the huddle. So, sure. um, so just getting that part down and just understanding the ins and outs of the league right now. So really just learning right now as of right now. So, Well, you said soaking in like a sponge. I get it. Um, you're now in OTAs. You get a chance to kind of settle in with your teammates a little bit. How have OTAs been for you so far? Like Whether it's the coaches or teammates. You mentioned your coaches earlier a second yeah. ago. What are some of your first impressions or lessons learned so far that maybe stand out to you? Um, It's just... It's very um, mental. The game's very more mental than college. Um, so studying my plays is really important. Um, watching film is really important, uh, more important now than ever because every little detail matters in the league. So um, just picking up on things like that, um, even the, for the first week. So um, just ready to get out there and uh, getting ready for mini camp, training camp, and uh, it's a season. So, yes, sir. Uh, what about, uh, so first impressions, now you've seen Justin slinging a bit, you've seen Keenan, Austin, you've seen like Derwin and Khalil, uh, first impression of the team? Um, we got a great team, <laughs> uh, got some dogs on the team, uh, some guys that I've watched for many of years, it's crazy to see these guys be in the locker room with them, like, even now I still just be at awe, like, wow, I'm really here with them, like. 
because coming growing up watching them and even high school college so just being here now is, is just a crazy moment for me in itself so um i think uh this year is gonna be really good for us how was who, who was the guy that was like the most like awestruck for you that you're like i can't believe this is real life hi um khalil khalil <laughs> <laughs> khalil master so god um, crazy Love it. All right, so first team all SEC in 2020, second team all SEC last year. Essentially, you had like three straight thousand yard seasons. Highlights of plenty. How would you kind of describe your game currently? And what are maybe some of the things you have as maybe opportunities for improvement that you want to kind of add to your bag now that you're in the NFL? Um, I feel like I've learned a lot at AM, especially running a pro style offense. Um, it helps my game. Definitely has helped my vision, um, the way I see the game, the way I approach the game, prepare for the game. So just that in itself, um, things I can improve on, I feel like I really can improve on my overall game, just my speed, um, my strength, um, just understanding the play faster. Um, so I got a lot of things I need to work on, but um, I'm excited for the future for me and uh, being with the Chargers. So, yes, sir. I'm excited. I can't wait to see you ball out on this team, man. It's going to be impressive to see you and kind of Austin kind of tag team uh, that backfield. Uh, you got lots of personalities on this yeah. Chargers team, whether it's Justin with the brisket, you got Keen Allen playing the piano, you mm -hmm. got Derwin on Madden. I mean, there's all kinds of guys who have either personality or hilarious or hobbies. Um, definitely some characters. Any kind of funny stories or conversations or things you've had with some teammates that you can share? Um, not yet. Um, it's been pretty serious, so <laughs> I yeah. eventually I probably will, but I haven't heard anything. Yet. You mentioned you talked to the coaching staff so far. What was that first conversation like with your running backs coach? Like, what you guys talk about? Like, what's kind of your mentality when you're having that conversation? Um, it's a ultra focus, um, improvement every day type talk. Um, just taking one day at a time. Um, so. It's been going good. I like Coach Foster. Uh, he's really helped me a lot, even though I've been there for like two or three weeks. He's already taught me a new new couple techniques that I've never learned. So um, I'm just ready to get get back out there and get better. So um, Can you share? Can you share one of those techniques? I'm dying to know. Um, it's just like um when it, one told me I think it was yesterday actually, um I was taking a handoff and I didn't know when you take the hand off, your bottom hand is on the side that you're going on. So you're supposed to have the ball on the outside hand. So your bottom hand, off, it just makes it easier. So you just, from the bottom hand, you go like this. But I used to just two hands, and then I'll go to my outside hand. But it just kind of makes it easier to turn the ball to your outside hand, to the outside on. Away from it, the it's, it's amazing how... You know, simple yet complex. Some of these things are. You don't even think about some of these things, but there's yeah. like forty-seven thousand decision like firings that are happening, and so even something like that, it's. I can't imagine like the ramp up period and having to kind of soak in whether it's play calling, whether it's scheme, whether it's coaching technique, as well as just like getting in the weight room. Like that's that's got to be a lot. Um, yeah. We're wrapping up with Isaiah Spiller. Isaiah, thank you so much for doing this. Um, last question for you. I, I know how important football is to you and your family, obviously. But, like, there's certainly more to life than just football. Tell us a bit about yourself, like, off the field, whether it's, like, hobbies, life priorities, favorite movie, um, I don't know, anything you like to do on the weekends. Like, who is Isaiah Spiller when he's not on the field? Um, I'm really a homebody, relaxed. <laughs> uh, I tend to chill a lot. Um, I go fishing a lot, though, especially back at home. Um, that's something I do like consistently. Uh, <laughs> I think it kind of like gets my mind away from everything. Um, and I like to catch fish with my dad and my friends as well. So um, that's what I usually do on the weekends if I have free time. So, so. all right, Victor, victory food, victory food. You just won your first NFL game on Sunday or maybe Thursday. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, what is your victory meal? Some crawfish. Okay. <laughs> Got to find a good spot in L.A. I don't know those, but if I find one, I'll let you know. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, uh, I just, being from the South, that's where we eat a lot. It's a lot of down. So, um, yeah. Um, so we eat it a lot.
crawfish, so so. <laughs> I love it. All right. Well, when you see that crawfish on Instagram or Twitter, we'll know that you won. Um, uh, Isaiah, seriously, thank you so much for hopping on, man. Best of luck the rest of OTAs this upcoming season. Can't wait to see you battle out with the rest of the guys. Excited to see you rock the football for these Los Angeles Chargers. Uh, yeah. Isaiah, anything you want to tell Chargers fans that they can help you promote? Anything that you're going, that going on that we can help you kind of get the word out on? Um, I ain't got nothing right now, but um, boats up. <laughs> Let's go. Awesome. Isaiah, thank you so much for hopping on. Best of luck. We'll talk soon, all right? Yes, sir. Thanks for having me. Of course.